Hey everyone, today we are going to explore an efficient and flexible way to extract data from your Google Sheets using Google Apps Script. But first, let's quickly look at some simpler methods and why they might not be ideal in certain situations. So imagine you have a Google Sheet tracking student projects and their progress. Let's see how we might traditionally get that data using Apps Script. So first of all, let's go to Extensions and select Apps Script. So let's start by breaking this example down. In the first line here of our function, we are connecting to Spreadsheet app and getting the active spreadsheet. And then on the next line, we are selecting the sheet uh, by name and our sheet is sheet one. And on this line, we're using the object, which is sheet, and we're using get data range to select all the cells with data. And then we're using get values to actually grab those values from those cells and store them in our data variable over here. And you can think of the data variable as a big grid or a table holding all the information from our spreadsheet. Next up is our for loop. And this is how we are going to go through each row in our spreadsheet one by one. Notice that we are starting at one. That's because the first row, row zero, is our header row. So we're just gonna get the actual data from our Google Sheet. Inside the loop, we're grabbing the specific pieces of information from each row. So data followed by our row number, which increments after each loop, and our column number, we'll get our student name from the spreadsheet. Uh, this one, we'll get the project title as we are incrementing the column number up by one, so that will get the next column along, which is our project title. And we're doing this for each of our columns. And these are all being used, uh, being set as variables, which we can use in our console log down here and log those to our console. So let's try running that now. And as you can see in the execution log, it's got our student names and their project titles for us. So this works fine, but it's a bit rigid. If you rearrange the columns or add new ones, you have to manually go through and update these column references in your code each time a column gets moved or added. So this can make it a bit error prone and it's not very maintainable. Okay, so now let's have a look at another example using get range with A1 notation. So in some ways, this is slightly more flexible since you're referencing columns by their letter and number, but it still requires you to know each exact column location, as we've got denoted here, to get our, our name range and our project titles range and our status range. And also, you have to make separate calls to get range for each column and then flatten the results, which is a bit cumbersome, but you know, it still does work. Now let's look at the method we're focused on today, which addresses the limitations of some of the previous approaches by using spread syntax and the index of function. And these tools can make your code much more adaptable to changes in your spreadsheet structure. So now let's delete this code and go into our next example, which will be hopefully a lot more efficient. So just as before, our first line here is grabbing a reference to our currently open spreadsheet, which this app script is linked to. So think of it like opening a cover of a book. And then on our next line here, we're defining our sheet variable, and then we're getting our sheet by its name. So in this case, sheet one. So think of this like opening a page in that book we've just opened. So now here is where the magic happens using spread syntax. So I'm gonna define uh, two variables in here in between these uh, square brackets. The first one is gonna be called head, and that's going to get our row of uh, column names, so our header row. And then we're using spread syntax, which is these three dots, and putting all the rest of the data into the data variable. 
And then, similar to the first example, we're going to uh, get data range, so get our active data range containing all our values, and then we are going to use the get values method to get all of those values for us. So let's select that uh, from here and use open and close brackets to finish that line off. So now we've got this line defined, it will instantly assign the first row, so our headers, to the head variable and all the remaining rows to the data variable. And this is far cleaner and much more concise than manually splitting arrays or defining uh, columns. And now similar to before, we need to loop through that data. So we're going to get our data variable and use the for each method. Uh, and within there, we need to go through each row and we get the index of that row as well. And let's use some uh, curly brackets there. And now let's define our variables which we want to get. So let's start off getting that student name. So our first column in our sheet. So I'm going to define a variable here called student name and then set this equal to our current row and then use square brackets. And then we're going to use get our header row. So we're going to look for the column name and we're going to do that using the index of function or method I should say. So we're going to get the index of and then, and now let's go back to our Google Sheet to check the name of our column. So here's the first column we're going to get and our column name is student name. So let's copy this over to our app script now. Okay, so let's now paste our column name into here. So we need to use uh, single quotes or double quotes as it's a string. So let's paste in student name. And essentially what's happening here, so we're using index of to act like a detective almost, to find the column containing student name and it's returning its position in that array. So it's getting, uh, that will actually return a, a zero as it's our first column. So it grabs the corresponding value from that current row, which is our student name here. So now let's just test this out by logging this to our console. So let's use console.log and let's, lo let's log our student name here and let's try running this. So here we go, the console log has printed the names of those students to our execution log. And this will work in just the same way for our other columns as well. So let's define a new variable now. And this time, let's get the project title. So let's define a new variable called project title. Again, use our row, if I could type, our row. And again, let's get the head variable and use the index of method. And this time we need the project title. Let's also log this into our console log here, project title, and let's run this again. And we should now see our project titles added as well. And the nice thing about this method is if the structure of our sheet changes, as long as the names remain the same, uh, it won't affect this code. So let's try that now. Let's go back to our Google Sheet. And in our Google Sheet, let's move this column over to the end of our sheet. And now let's run our code again, and it should still function without any issues. However, if we did change the column names, we just need to make sure we reflect those changes within our code and update these here. So there you have it. The spread syntax using the index of method makes this much more efficient and readable, and especially when dealing with spreadsheets containing a large number of columns. It offers more flexibility and makes it more adaptable to work with different sheet names and different column headers by simply changing the strings in the get name or index of uh, in the code. And this code snippet really serves as a, a good foundation for you for more complex projects or automations. So you could use the extracted data to send emails, uh, updates using different APIs or trigger other processes. So I hope this explanation clarifies why this approach is so powerful. If you have any questions or want to see more advanced use cases, 
then please do let me know in the comments. Happy scripting.